Oh man, am I excited about this video. I think you're gonna dig it too, so we're not gonna waste any time. Just listen, this is where we're going. <laughs> Hey, John here, and this is your Tuesday Blues, and this is a special Tuesday Blues. This is number 300. It's really hard to believe that I've got 300 weeks worth of guitar lessons right here on the YouTube channel, but here we are, and I wanted to do something special to commemorate this milestone, so I reached out to my premium members and asked, what song do you want to see a tutorial of? Gave a little list, and they voted, and this one came out number one. We're going to get to Hey Hey by Big Bill Brunzi, famously covered on the Eric Clapton Unplugged album in just a second, but first, a couple things to keep in mind first this is in the key of E this is a standard tuned guitar and three yes this is going to pull heavily on some fancy finger picking so if you have some trouble with it there are tons of other lessons here on the channel or bgi.com to check out that can help you get up to speed and finally I do not have the tab available with this one but I'll link up a couple of resources where you can find different versions of it to help you pull this thing together but I'm gonna go pretty slowly through the main bits and if you slow this down which you can do on YouTube just hit that little gear icon and check out the playback settings then I think you'll be able to get there and practice 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 will certainly help all right there's quite a lot to cover so we're gonna get into it and we're gonna start with that signature riff let's give it a listen <laughs> All right, a lot going on there, but that to me is the hero of the song. And we start out on beat four. So we count one, two, three, four, one. So we start just before the beat with that slide, starting from the B note on the fifth string, second fret, up to the seventh fret. That's the E note. And then we can punch that E, and I'm just kind of getting underneath it and snapping it a little bit, but it's really short and choked out. All right, so that's beat one, and the thumb is gonna pump along on that six string on the quarter note pulse. What we're gonna do on top of that is out of this really cool Hendrix chord, I call it the Hendrix chord, you can probably hear why, but it's really an E7 sharp nine. There's a sharp nine, adds a really cool color to it. And we're really going to pay attention to the notes under this chord on strings three and two. So if you need to finger this differently, you certainly can, but this is what I'm doing. And I'm going to bend up with these two, right? This is on the beat. So one, two, three, four, one, two. And I'm just pushing those slightly sharp. And then I want to pick up my uh, little finger because I need to expose the open second string. I'm going to do a brush up with my index finger and drag through the open first string and second string. And you'll notice that I tend to pick up my ring finger as well because I don't want that third string to sound so I'm really just going to kind of gently raise off of the string but keep my finger still on it just to kind of 
you know, mute it out in case my brush up gets away from me and I hit that third string, we don't get that D note in there. Nothing wrong if you do, but just going for some good clean picking here. All right. And then we do this really interesting move where we're hitting the bass by itself on beat four. And then for the and of four, we're playing this, which looks a lot like an A7. So it's a pretty interesting chord choice here, but it sounds so awesome in context. And all we're gonna do is sort of pump that. So bass, chord, and then we're at bar two, where we're going to hit the bass, and then the chord again. But timing is everything, so let's hear this little bit in time. And you can brush up through those, or sometimes you'll see me just picking those with these three fingers. All right, and then here comes another really cool part. Back to the bass, then second string, then bass and first string, and then the open second. All right, that's that cool melody that kind of caps off that riff. I'm picking those, uh, the second string with my middle finger and the first string with my uh, ring finger, but you could certainly alter that on your own. I use a thumb and three finger approach in most of my picking, so this really feels comfortable to me to kind of stick to that. All right, for our A part, we're gonna slide from this E position here at the end of the E measure. So this happens before we really get into A7, but it's a handy little device to slide down the neck. So now our hand is right here where we need it. And what we're gonna do is change the bass to the fifth string and pump out the uh, open fifth string on the quarter notes. And then on the end of one, we're gonna hit the A that octave on the third string, second fret. So just hold down an A7 here. All right, because for beat two, we're going to play the bass and along with it, the top two strings under that A7 chord there. And then for beat three, just remove that G and just play the top two strings bar at the second fret. And then on the end of three, open two strings. Then beat four, we got the bass, but it's by itself. And then we're back to the tones from the A7. And then we continue that. So we've got kind of this cool pulsing effect at the end of the measure that starts, and we continue that over the next bar, which is B1 and the end of one. And then what we're going to do is play beat two, and then this cool little move where we go open, second fret, and then open again. And timing is everything there. So let's have a listen to that in time. I'll play it slow though. All right, and notice how it's got some familiar feeling to it, right? When we were up here, and we did that punch and then hold where well, we're kind of doing that here just with the a7 chord right so once again then we're going to go back to our e riff This tune does something really cool for B7. Instead of going to this and doing some picking, it kind of keeps the melodic idea going and really takes it to a new place here by playing the B7 here. It's like an A7 moved up a whole step.
And what we're going to do now is have the bass on the fourth string, this F sharp note. And on the end of one, we're going to play the second uh, string. And then we're going to pinch on beat two. Then the second string again, and then pinch, but this time move up to the B note on the first string. And then on the end of B3, back down to the fifth fret, B4, nice and easy. We're just gonna kind of push through with the thumb on the F sharp and the B there, and slide back out. And then now we're headed into A, and this is one of the coolest little licks in the whole tune. We're gonna play the open fifth string, then the open second string, don't let that ring. We just want to punch that on our way to this. All right, and that's really the coolest part to me. We're going to pull off a couple of times. Pull from the G down to the F sharp on the first string. So that's fret three, two, and then open. Then back to the F sharp. Then we're going to hit the open six just as the bass. So palm mute that, and then hammer on. We're kind of getting ourselves back into E, so hammer on from the open third to the first fret of the third string. All right, and here is another cool lick. After you get through with this one, hit the bass string, the sixth string, and then open um, second, and then G sharp on the first string, back to the second, then back to the first, but open this time, back to the second, pull off from the F sharp to the E, and then come back to the C sharp, second string, second fret, and then the open first string. All right, but Again, timing is everything. Those are the notes, but how do they fall rhythmically? All right, and all we did to end it out is hammer on to that G sharp, and then you want to strum through your big E, E major chord. And from here, this is the very last measure. And so let that ring until beat four, where we can start the whole thing over again. All right, I told you, I know this is a lot of information. Feel free to rewind this thing, rewatch it, and go through it. And one thing that you can do on YouTube is hit the little gear icon, look at playback speed, and then slow it down. So I'm going to play through this at a slower tempo, not super slow, but if you need to slow it down even further, look for that little setting. So here we go with the 12 bars played at a slower tempo. Let's tackle the verse now, and if you've conquered the main theme, I'm confident that you can handle this verse. The picking is laid back considerably when you compare it to the main theme. Fact is, we start out the first two measures of the verse just throttling way back, and we're just going to pump out that quarter note pulse with the thumb, and on the end of each beat, we're plucking these tones from the E7 on the uh, fourth string third and second. So the first two measures sound like this. And what I do when I play this is I like to really keep those chords nice and quiet. It's certainly not the feature of this part, the vocal line is. So you might hear it like this. 
then we make a bigger statement after the vocal line is delivered and we're at bar three. All right, so what's happening there is we're punching the bass by itself on beat one of bar three and then we're plucking all of this E7, right? All these three strings and the bass together for beat two and beat three, and then beat four is bass and then chord, right? So you've got one, two, three, four, and... And then we start out beat four with the bass, the chord, and then the bass, and this time we pick up the D note on the second string. So lift that little finger and then we've got and then bass and the open strings. Just do a little brush up there to get us out of that measure as we head into our A7 measure. But let's listen to these four bars on E. And here's what we have over A. All right, headed into E. So what's happening there is I'm pumping out the bass it's on the fifth string, open, and then I'm doing this. All right, so that's a cool move at the end. It's pretty simple. So we're just reaching up and bending that G note. And then we end this measure with that open third string and we land top of the next measure on E. Really E7 because we're going to do this um, rhythm. we've done before. And now just like before, the B7 is going to be played in this position. Here's the picking for that. And then now we move down into A and do that same simple picking that we did before. As we head into E. And the cool thing is, once we're here, we're wrapping up with that finishing lick that we picked up in the main theme as well. So we're going to play that before heading back into the main theme. So now let's play through the verse at a slow speed and again use that playback speed adjustment if you need to to see what we're doing at a much slower pace. Alright, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you're learning something from it and I hope that it helps you get this song into your repertoire. It's a great one, a lot to learn, and it's really one of those unique standout acoustic blues tunes. But as I said in the beginning, this is not your first blues tune to learn. So if you need a place to start, check out membership with Blues Guitar Institute. I've got a roadmap that walks you through day one finger picking all the way up to some more complicated stuff that you could tackle like Hey Hey. Once again, thank you so much for your support. I really couldn't do these Tuesday Blues lessons without you out there watching, clicking, commenting. So please keep that up and I look forward to seeing you in the next Tuesday Blues. Until then, practice smart and play on.